Hello there, here we are at the Bible Exhibition today in Wallingford in the Gospel Hall and uh, folks have been coming in every day to hear the Gospel explained through the story of the Bible. The uh, Bible is a fascinating book, it's part of the history of our country and uh, it is amazing really just to get your head around how it came into existence uh, and why it's here. And you know, it's something that has been preserved for us in an incredible way. Uh, if you check out the history of the Bible and look at the manuscript documents and check out the very story of the Bible itself, you would be amazed to discover that the Bible is something that is so clearly preserved and maintained and kept for us so that we can understand it. And what we've been doing every day this week is getting boys and girls into this building and sitting them down and telling them a story from the Bible. Uh, then we'll give them a, a few things like refreshments and biscuits and then showing them round the exhibition. You might wonder what's this I've got in my hand here. Well, it's a story bag. And I've been telling them the story of Moses from this story bag. Now, I'll not tell you the whole of the story today because that would take a bit of time to do that. But really, I would like to just tell you a little of it. Over here on my left is the story of the Passover. Uh, Passover is commemorated by Jewish people even to this day. It takes them back to the time when, as a nation, they had grown to around right about 2 million people in the land of Egypt. And having been there for a period of 400 years old, Jacob went down there with his 12 sons, 70 uh, members of the family in total. They had grown to be quite a nation. Uh, many children, and indeed you might be familiar with the story of Moses. Moses was called Moses because he was drawn out of the river Egypt after his mother had tried to preserve his life by putting him in the basket and putting him at the side of the river. Princess comes along, hears the baby cry, and with that touch of a mother and a female heart, she, she is really moved to see this child. And to see the child uh, just rejected, really, and exposed to danger, she takes him to the palace, and uh, she acquires the services of Moses' mother. Of course, that was through the very smart thinking of Miriam, uh, Moses' sister, offering his mother to look after the baby and to nurse him. The story then goes on to 40 years later and we find that uh, Moses decides that uh, through a, a series of events that he wants to escape from Egypt and he goes and further down here we have a picture of the wilderness uh, scene and well history of the nation of Israel that runs from that but Moses goes off into the wilderness and he remains there for 40 years. 80 years have gone by. Moses decides then that uh, it's about time that he should go back but this isn't something he thinks of himself. For he meets God at the burning bush. That's what my story bag's about. God at the burning bush speaks to him and says, Moses, I want you to go back to, back to the country of Egypt. I want you to tell the people that God has sent you. And I want you to go to the Pharaoh. And I want you to tell him to let my people go. Moses, having been convinced by God that this is true, he crosses the Red Sea and he goes back. And he gets to the land of Egypt and having spoken to his people, he goes to the Pharaoh himself. And into the palace he goes to tell Pharaoh that God demands that he lets the people go. Well, if you know the story of the Bible and the story of the history of the, the nation of Israel, God ten times says to Pharaoh, let my people go. Ten times he refuses. Well, on the tenth, he eventually lets them go. But God punishes Pharaoh, and a series of events are recorded in the Bible, and we see some of this written on the board here. He turns the rivers into blood. Pharaoh renegades on, on, on his decision, uh, and he decides that, yeah, he'll let them go, and as long as the waters turn back to water. And God does that. Pharaoh turns his back on his decision and says, no, no, I'm not going to let them go. God does this a number of times. He sends different plagues. They're called the ten plagues. He sends frogs, sends flies. He sends locusts till ultimately God says that the final test will come, the final punishment. And that's what the story of the Passover is about. We've been telling the boys about this young lad. It's a bit of a pretend story, but it's based on fact. The pretend element is just the boy talking to his dad and about the lamb. But really effectively, the story goes on to say that God instructs that a lamb needs to be taken and observed for its perfection and that it's got no sores and no sore eyes, no sore feet. And the lamb is going to die so that the boy can live. Because God has said, if he sees the blood, which they'll take from the lamb and put it on the doorposts and the lintel, then when the angel of death comes, the oldest child in the house will live because someone has died in the place of the lamb. 
The Jews had to do that. In fact, the Jewish people did that. The blood was shed so that the child would live. It was the lamb for the lad. And it's a picture that the Lord Jesus, he died that we might live. He's the lamb of God. He died so that we could be forgiven. And he gave himself upon the cross so that our sins could be forgiven. And if you were to believe that and turn from your sin and trust in the Lord Jesus, you could know God's great forgiveness and salvation. Well, at this stage, the angel of death comes on the 14th, 9th of that first month. And of course, well, the Bible says, let me read it to you. Pharaoh rose up in the night, he and all his servants and all the Egyptians, and there was a great cry in Egypt, for there was not a house where there was not one dead. And he called for Moses and Aaron by night and said, rise up and get you forth from among my people, both you and the children of Israel, and go serve the Lord as you have said. Pharaoh demands they leave. And so they do. They make their journey back across the Red Sea. But this time, God opens it, and on dry land they pass across the Red Sea. And they're in safety. Now this Bible exhibition is really here to get people to think about God, the Bible, his word, the message God has sent. And we're praying that you'll think about it, and that God will richly bless you. If you don't have a Bible, then you get your hands on one. If you'd like to hear more about this, go onto the website, seekthetruth.org.uk. Listen to what the message of the Bible is about. And I'm praying that God will richly bless you. Thank you for listening.